The trip that I'm about to take might just be my coolest, biggest, most adventurous one yet. If you've already seen the title of this video, then you already know. I'm going to Egypt. This is going to be my third continent, the longest flight I've ever been on, and a big old adventure. <laughs> If you couldn't tell by the state of my hair, it is approximately 10, maybe 10 and a half hours later, and I'm in Egypt. But I'm not done with my traveling yet because I have another hour and 10 minute flight from Cairo, which is where I currently am, to Luxor. <laughs> Since the sun's about to set, we're getting in a quick little view of daylight here in Luxor. Completely unshowered, jet lagged, gross from the plane. But we're quickly realizing that there are very, very few tourists here because right now we're next to Luxor Temple and there's no one there. Right now it is about 7.45 a.m., which if you know me, you know I don't normally wake up this early, but last night I crashed at about 10 o'clock and I had to get up early today anyway because we're going on a full day tour all around Luxor. But um, we're gonna have some coffee first and wake up a little bit and just look at this ridiculous, ridiculous view. <laughs> We are here at our first stop of the day, which is the Colossi of Memnon. It is a temple that, as you can tell, isn't fully intact anymore. It's quite old, so, you know, things happen. I don't even know if you can tell on camera quite how big they are, but they're huge. Right now we're walking into the Valley of the Kings, which aside from the pyramids, which are maybe a bit more well known, uh, it's where many, many pharaohs were buried. And the idea was that if they were hidden in this valley, uh, it was less likely that the tombs would be robbed, basically. excited about this. We are about to go into the tomb of Tutankhamun, uh, who you may know as King Tut, and this year is actually the 100th anniversary of when his tomb was found. Right now we are in the tomb of Ramses the fifth and sixth, and don't worry, I did pay for a photo pass, so I'm not filming without permission. <laughs> 
I feel like that's important to say. This tomb is really interesting for two big reasons. One, it is gorgeous. Our tour guide pointed out uh, that it's probably his favorite because it's one of just the most beautifully decorated tombs that you can come see here at the Valley of the Kings. But also it's really interesting because there are two pharaohs that are buried here. The reason there are two pharaohs buried here is because Ramses VI died before he could have a tomb be built for him. So they didn't have time, <laughs> which is a really interestingly simple answer as to why he didn't have his own tomb. There was just not enough time. We're now finishing up our time here at the Valley of the Kings and I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm a little bit speechless. Uh, we were just talking about how pictures and videos, it's such a cliche, but they really, really don't do it justice. I mean, it's a huge part of it is that it's just so, so special to be here. We ended up seeing four or five tombs. I didn't film in all of them. Overall, incredible experience. Chepset's funeral temple, which you can see is amazing. Our tour guide is so knowledgeable and he's told us so much about it. So I'm really trying to process a lot of information at once, but I'm gonna share at least one or two pieces with you. So Hatshepsut is one of the most, if not the most, famous female pharaoh. And what's interesting about her and about this temple in particular is that after her, her stepson took over and he was apparently a, not a fan of Hatshepsut because, as our tour guide was explaining, he went through this temple and had her name and her image scratched out or had them painted over or in some cases had them scratched out and then painted over. So I took some clips of some examples of that because I thought it was so, frankly, hilariously petty. <laughs> Right now we are exploring Karnak Temple, which is, according to our guide, the largest temple in all of Egypt. The oldest structures here uh, were started as early as 2000 BCE, and then the most recent ones were built a whole 2000 years later than that. The reason why, or part of the reason why, this is all so well preserved, I mean, obviously a lot of it is deconstructed, for example, um, but it was buried under sand for thousands of years, and that was a big part of why it was able to stay intact. So this Luxor temple is actually connected, or I should say was connected, to the Karnak temple, which is where we just were. There is a row of sphinxes, both here and at that temple, that used to be one long street, all connected. And now, not all of them are still there, but you can see quite a few of them, and it's it's a really impressive sight to see. <laughs> It is our second, maybe technically third day here in Luxor because we arrived Tuesday night, um, but it's also our last day. We did a full day tour yesterday, we have a half day tour today, and then at 7.30ish, I think, our flight to Cairo. So this video may end, but there will be another one. Luxor is kind of all about the tourism industry. Our tour guide was telling us that that's the main industry here, and it's because there's just so much to see. I'm on the rooftop here at Nefertiti Hotel, which is right across from the Temple of Luxor and the Nile. So we're gonna have some pretty amazing views while we eat our breakfast. starting our day here at the Valley of the Nobles, which is just on the other side of 
that pyramid-shaped mountain from the Valley of the Kings, where we were yesterday. And it's essentially the same idea. So it's a lot of tombs, except instead of the pharaohs, these are the nobles. So people that were really rich, high priests, important people, but not quite as important as the pharaohs. <laughs> Right now, I'm inside the first temple that we're going to be visiting today, and as you can tell, uh, there's no one else here. <laughs> it is off-season, there's still COVID concerns, and we're at one of the less popular tourist sites here, so there's a few reasons why there aren't other people here, but this is still incredible. The art on these walls are divided into three different sections, or three topics. So we have his career, his life, and his afterlife, and those three periods of life slash afterlife are what make up his tomb. That gorgeous tomb that we just came out of was for Senefer. I have never been anywhere like that. <laughs> I asked our tour guide Mansoor yesterday what his favorite site to see in Luxor is. And he said yesterday, you'll see it tomorrow. And we just did. If you noticed in that tomb there, the ceiling was not actually flat, like a lot of tomb ceilings, maybe all other tomb ceilings are. <laughs> that is because they had grapevines painted on the ceiling and they wanted the shape of the ceiling, those curves to represent an actual vineyard. It very much had the desired effect. I felt like I was somewhere I've never been before, which, you know, is accurate. <laughs> We're now in the temple of Deir el Medina, which means monastery of the city. And unlike what we were just visiting, those tombs, this is actually a lot more recent. Now don't get me wrong, it is still from around 280 BC. So it's not recent, but by, you know, ancient Egypt standards, more recent. <laughs> As you can see, there is still some color in the walls here. When this was originally built, it was completely colorful. But, of course, with time, thousands of years, that fades. There's one drawing here that I particularly want to point out, which is this depiction of the weighing of the heart against the feather. And that was the final test that the ancient Egyptians believed they had to go through in order to make it to the afterlife. So the heart was weighed against a feather, and if your heart was lighter than a feather, it meant you were a good person and you could pass through and move on to the afterlife. But if your heart was heavier than a feather, as, you know, hearts typically are thought to be, then that meant you were a bad person and you could not move on to the afterlife. We are now at our last stop of the day, which is the absolutely breathtaking Habu Temple. I'm just showing you, for scale, how big this thing behind me is. We'll, we'll walk away for a second. Can you tell? <laughs> it's huge! Unlike with a lot of the hieroglyphics we've seen that are a lot more shallow, these ones are maybe six, eight inches deep. I'm not going to stick my hand into this ancient ruin, but uh, my whole hand would probably fit. Our tour guide pointed these out to us and explained that these were probably done so deep into this really thick wall so that they couldn't just be scratched out easily. It's really interesting that even back then they had to think ahead about people maybe wanting to erase what was there. Yeah, I just want to really emphasize how few tourists there are here. 
هنا راسي Our last day in Luxor is coming to an end. We are going to be headed to the airport shortly to fly to Cairo. So the next part of this adventure will be in a new video because I know I already have way too much footage, but it has been a truly, truly amazing first couple days in Egypt. And I'm so excited for the next leg of this journey. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.